right, I'm Shelly. We're gonna make a strawberry crunch cake today. It's really easy. Um, it is definitely not for a last minute dessert, but it is definitely for a do it ahead of time and be ready dessert. So to prepare for this, I am gonna grease the bottom. It's a suggest to do that. Um, but first, let's get started with just making a white cake. So it's just a cake mix with the ingredients to make the cake. So that'll be three eggs, a cup and a quarter of water, and a third of a cup of oil. You can also use egg whites if you want, or you can make it homemade if you want. It's totally up to you. All right, so I'm gonna use a stand mixer. You could just use a whisk if you prefer. Um, I've got it set to beat and two minutes and we'll go get started. So it's gonna work on that. And I am gonna take um, some softened butter and just grease the bottom. You can hear the mixer uh, doing its own thing, which it's designed to do. Um, and so if you use a mixer like this deluxe stand mixer, which has some smart built into it, you will, um, you don't have to kind of think, you just, you know, does it for you. Okay. You'll notice how it just turns itself off automatically. Um, and I click the release button at the back, remove the paddle. And, um, and here's the other thing that I'm, I, you know, I'm like all about easy. So this mixing uh, paddle has like a, a scraper on the side of it. So rather than getting another scraper out, you can just scrape the bowl with this. Now, you'll notice this is quite yellow. So I apologize because we have um, backyard hens, which are a ton of fun. Uh, very frustrating some days, but they, uh, they do run around and eat the grass and the clover, and so the yolks are quite yellow. So a white cake usually is made just with egg whites, and it is a very fluffy, very soft textured um, cake, um, which makes it kind of unique. Mine is a, mine's kind of yellow. <laughs> the yellow cake mix is typically made with the yolks, which has a different flavor and, and feel to it. Anyways, this is just gonna go straight in the oven, just like this, of course, not the lid. All right, so the next part that we're gonna do is the um, really soaking the top of the warm cake. So what we're gonna do is we're going to pour three quarters of a cup of boiling water in this easy read measuring cup. I can see accurately as I'm looking down in it, um, strawberry jello. <laughs> so you could use any flavor. Uh, depending on the fruit that is in season. So we're gonna use fresh strawberries on the top at the end to garnish. So just pair your favorite flavoring. Don't I love that color. <laughs> all right, now we're gonna whisk this all together. So it's all dissolved. This reminds me of when I was a kid. What a familiar flavor, aroma. Okay, and now we're gonna tone it down with some cold water. Let me just make sure, yep, it is all dissolved. We're going to put some cold water in here. What I'm going to do is instead of using a big fork, I'm going to use this to poke holes because basically we want the jello to seep down inside. Ooh, this is making a bit of a mess. The whole point is though that we're going to get this whole jello layer. Okay, so we pour this, a bit of a mess, eh? No one is gonna see the top, so Shelly, it doesn't really matter. We pour this over the sides, well, over the top. We want it to go down into all those holes. Slow and steady wins the race, miss. <laughs> Got a little carried away there, it looks like. And then this is the part where it really needs to sit because it's in the sitting that it's going, the jello is gonna set up. I'm not sure that I completely dissolved that like I thought I did. Oh, it's pretty good though. Extra potent bits here at the end. All right. <laughs> we'll pat all those little things down. So what we're gonna do next is um, this cools at least 44 hours in the fridge or overnight. 
can see, let me show you up close, the top looks all speckled and you can see that it is soaked down in. You can see the dark red marks. And so in the end, what you're looking for is pieces that have the jello soaked in like that. And um, we're gonna stick this in the fridge. And then when I come back, what we're gonna do is put the frosting on and then the topping. So this has all these bright, um, fluffy, bright flavors and then, and textures. And then on top, we're gonna put a creamy, like a cream cheese and whipped cream icing with vanilla and a little bit of almond. Um, and that's gonna go on top. And then we're gonna put all these crunchy, nice little extra bits on top. So it's super easy. Just do it in stages. This part is really your baking stage. So you would do this the night before. And then in the morning, uh, you'll make, you'll do the topping and then take it. All right, it is time to put the creamy topping on this strawberry crunch cake. So I have eight ounces of cream cheese in here. So I kind of smeared it up the sides to help it soften and kind of so it's not so hard and lumpy. I'm going to lock this on and use now the whisk. So I, uh, I also, I'm gonna show you. <laughs> so we turn it to uh, whip. The default time is three minutes and 30 seconds. We press start. And I get my cup and a half of whipping cream ready. So I'm going to finish measuring this in my easy read. The other things that I have going here. I'm just going to pause this for a second. Is I'm going to put in my one cup of icing sugar. So powdered sugar. And a half a teaspoon of almond extract. To me... A little bit goes a very long way so I'm gonna be kind of gentle on it although for vanilla you know I don't think you can have too much so a teaspoon a generous teaspoon of vanilla and a meager half teaspoon of So you can see the stage, it's quite vanilla-y looking. And I maybe should just scrape it just to make sure that we got all the powdered sugar. So the reason I was supposed to, and I forgot, put all this stuff in at the beginning is that the mixer knows to kind of go gentle at the beginning. So you can hear as it starts up, it goes slowly and then it kind of slowly increases speed. So that's so that everything doesn't go, you know, go at high speed and just start whipping everything everywhere. So I'm up to speed five right now and I am almost a minute in. So I am gonna start pouring this in slowly. Just a pause and show you what's going on. It's getting thick and it almost looks like soft serve right now. Okay, finished. It's so beautiful. Okay, just check this out. Like you can see where I pulled the whisk out. It is beautiful and creamy and smells delicious. And here's the cake. So now this is our next step. So you can see this is all bright, all set. And what we're gonna do, oh, it smells delicious actually. Just gonna stir this all around. Mm. Look how gorgeous that is. So if you ever want a really easy, delicious topping, I'm thinking this would be it. How the easiest way to make a cream cheese frosting, seriously. So I love that the mixer knows how to do things. 
and that our team has figured out easy ways to do things because it cuts out a whole step right there, right? So we'll get a offset spatula. And go ahead and spread this out. Feels very luxurious. And then I'll show you the quick topping that we're going to do. All right, we're going to make a topping that is basically crunchy, sweet, and colorful and put it on top of here. So one of the things that I love about this recipe and what makes it so approachable is that you don't have to figure out how to decorate it pretty. So even if this is a mess, we're still going to cover it up. <laughs> and so uh, it calls for vanilla wafers and I have some... Um, I didn't buy them because I have these little amaretti cookies. Now they are not everybody's favorite, which is why they're still around. I quite love them, but they're crunchy and they have an almond um, flavor to them. So combined with some graham crackers, I think they'll go just fine. So I need about a cup, which is about a third full of this um, little container. This is a three cup container. So. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm gonna cover the top. And then I'm just gonna pulse it in the manual food processor. So I do have varying sizes. You can see. They're all kinds of sizes. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the quarter cup of melted butter in. I'm just gonna stir it. I could pulse it some more. And another pack of Jello. So some more strawberry Jello. So it's an inexpensive way to get some summer flavor. And also, Kind of one of those things that you don't have to fuss over. So two packs of Jello, a white cake mix, about a cup of cookies, some strawberries for garnish. We need a pack of cream cheese, a cup and a half of um, whipping cream probably is the most expensive part. So we're just going, going to go ahead and it's really bright, very fun. And you could add this right um, just before you serve it. Just so it keeps that nice crunchy texture. And I'm just gonna try and keep it kind of even. I think this is going to be a hit with the kids, a great summer party kind of recipe. Okay, and then one last thing. Is we're going to go ahead and slice some strawberries using the cup slicer. So you just push it over top, go to the next one, and the next one, and continue. And then the last one you put it on the stand, and then they are all sliced perfectly. How easy is this? So if you are taking this somewhere, that would be a really uh, a fun little party trick to, <laughs> to do with either the kids or um, uh, sell a bunch to your friends because they're all going to want one when they see this, right? So what a great Canada Day cake this looks like. Mm -mm -mm. And I don't think there will be any left over. There you go. I'll bring this up close so you can see just how pretty it is. And when you take it, when you are transporting it, a little bit of condensation inside the lid, you can see that I can put the whole lid on and clip it down and it doesn't squish 
anything. There's just a couple that reach the top and they'll come off. Okay, that's it. I hope you love this cake. I hope you make it. Um, and of course, I'll share uh, all of the tools that we used to make this super easy.